Good volume there. Uh, first of all, some vocabulary. Hey, you launch an object through the air. By the way, even though I'm saying we're launching it through the air, in our magic physics world, we're going to ignore air resistance because air resistance is yucky. So we're going to pretend we're launching it through a vacuum. But I'm going to say you're launching it through the air because all of you know what I really mean is it's in free fall. When we launch an object through the air, we call it a projectile. And we can really think of a projectile as experiencing two types of motion at the same time. It's moving both horizontally. What would be a good letter? X is going to be our abbreviation, like on the x-axis. And it's moving vertically. call it in the y direction. And here is what I need to convince you of. It turns out the horizontal velocity is constant. I'll abbreviate horizontal velocity shack as Vx. What would I abbreviate horizontal acceleration as? Ax. Why? Ax is zero. Now this bugs kids. Put your pencils down. A key idea that I want you to realize is that horizontal acceleration is zero. Uh, vertical velocity is not constant. It slows down on the way up, and then it starts speeding back up again on the way down. Why? Because the vertical acceleration, yeah, it's con the acceleration is constant. It's negative. 9.8 meters per second squared. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So if you give me a projectile, immediately what I'm going to do, Jake, is I'm going to divide my page into horizontal and vertical components. And as soon as I divide my page into, I usually go H horizontal, V for vertical, the next thing I write is, Ax is 0, Ay is negative 9.8. That's the case for any projectile on the Earth. Uh, on the moon would be different. A would still be 0 horizontally. Vertically, the moon's acceleration is about negative 1.6. But that's the case for any projectile in the universe. Horizontal acceleration is 0 if we ignore air resistance. Vertical acceleration is what's causing it to go up and go down. What else does that mean? Well, d equals vit plus a half at squared. But now, Halen, I'm emphasizing direction, 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 direction. Remember with the river question, I said make sure the velocity and the distance are in the same direction, same idea here. <laughs> Right? The nice thing is the horizontal distance or displacement is just going to be Vx times t. We're going to divide the questions into their horizontal and vertical components. We're going to add more here as we go along. But for now, let's try a question. Projectile is launched horizontally. All of us underline the word horizontally. That's important. From a 92 meter high cliff at a velocity of 19 meters per second. A says, how long until the projectile hits the ground? B says, how far from the base of the cliff will the projectile hit the ground? By the way, let's draw a picture. There's my cliff. 92 meters high. And there's my projectile. How fast? 19 meters per second. OK. I 
I'm going to break this up into horizontal and vertical. And right away, I know horizontally there's no acceleration, and vertically the acceleration is negative 9.8. I write that down, I'll say that's a no-brainer. Now, it's not a no-brainer, Shaq, because you need to know physics to know that, but what I'm saying is if I understand physics and I'm solving a projectile, components, boom, boom. What else have they told me? What's that 92, vertical or horizontal? What is it? I'm going to say fussy displacement, so I'm going to call that dy, and it's not 92. Technically, what is it? Negative 92. What's that 19, vertical or horizontal? What else do I know? How many things do I have in the horizontal column? Two. Not enough. How many things do I have in the vertical column? Two. Not enough. I must know something else. And I do. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. V where? Horizontal or vertical? I've got to be fussy now. Horizontal. I know the horizontal velocity. It's 19. I know VI. It's 19. I know v, v, final, v final is 19. You know why? What's my horizontal acceleration? Zero. So VI is 19, is 19, is 19, is 19, is 19, is 19, is 19 horizontally. He's on the right track. He is seeing, D Darian is seeing something, but he hasn't quite got there yet. Yeah. Uh, I know VY initial. The split second, if I launch horizontally, the split second that I leave the cliff, vertically, how fast am I traveling? Nothing. Haven't started falling yet. I will never tell you that. That you'll need to, this is very similar to dropped VY. We said V initial was zero, but now since we've got a horizontal component, that's why I cut you off, Darian, VI. Which one? Now we've got to break them down. Now we've got two-dimensional motion, much more interesting. Oh, which column do I have three things in? I can solve this vertically. What do they want me to find in part A? Part A. Time? T equals question mark. I'm looking for an equation that has A, V, D, and T in it. Now I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to say dy equals vy initial t plus one half. A, Y, T squared. I won't take marks off if you don't put those there, but trust me, direction's going to become really important, Emma, and so it's easy for me to reinforce vertical goes in vertical, vertical goes in vertical, vertical goes in vertical. Oh! Ahem! Ha-ha! Right? For a split second, we haven't started falling yet. I like that. Um, so I really get this, dy equals ay t squared over 2. We've seen this before without the y's sitting there. But we have seen d equals a t squared over 2. We've said to ourselves, selves, how do we get the t by itself? Tawny, this is the nicer version of that quadratic. I don't need to pull out the quadratic formula. Uh, what is it? t is going to be... 2 times d divided by a square root, vertical, vertical. It's going to be the square root of 2 times, what was dy? Negative 92 divided by negative 9.8. What do you get? 2, come on. 2 times negative 92 divided by negative 9.8 square root. Do you get 4.3333 blah, 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 blah? Yeah. I'm going to go 4.333. Now, somewhere I've got to report my answer. So down here near the bottom, I'm going to say A 
t equals 4.3 seconds. I'll even put a little box around that. There's one of my answers. And there's the work to find it. How long does it take to hit the ground? 4.33. How long does it take to hit the ground? 4.3333. How long does it take to hit the ground? How long is it traveling sideways for? 4.33. Oh, are you saying that I can also put that T in the horizontal column? How many things do I have in the horizontal column now? Three? Oh, I can find four. By the way, no pun intended, on projectile questions, you're going to spend most of your time finding time. In fact, if you know the time of flight, the question falls apart. Then it's plug and chug. Um, what do they want me to find in part B? Which distance? Yeah, you know what? They want me to find this distance here because it's really going to look something like that. Now, that has a fancy word. We call that the range. The range of a projectile is its horizontal displacement. So I'm going to write down here dx equals question mark under the horizontal column. I'm looking for an equation that has a, v, t, and d in it. No. Which one? Same? Really? Oh, this is nice. So you're saying I can use dx equals vx t plus 1 half ax t squared. Darian, why didn't I put an initial there? So? Because there's an initial in the equation. Why was I lazy and omitted it? Huh? You know what? Initial is final. Because of that, because ax is 0. Now, listen close, Rob. This bugs kids. Kids are so used to having an acceleration, they want to put the negative 9.8 in for the acceleration. What direction is the negative 9.8, vertical or horizontal? What direction is an x, vertical or horizontal? Don't put verticals into horizontals, and you'll be fine. By far the most common mistake, Jeff, kids, and I, I know saying this right now, making this big song and dance, I still know it's going to happen on your test next week, Tuesday. Well, two weeks Tuesday. Some of you will. It's just because, read, you want to, I don't want to put something, it's gravity, it's under, you know, vertically it's under the influence of gravity. Gravity doesn't work sideways. It works up down. So don't be putting a sideways gravity acceleration. Uh -uh. Oh, not only that, this equation now ends up being way, 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 way nicer. Uh, I guess it's going to be uh, dx equals 19 times 4.33333, blah, blah. How far will this projectile go? Where will it land? 19 times answer button. As I said, you'll spend most of your time finding time. Finding the range actually fell apart pretty quick. Pretty quick. 82.3? B. Dx equals 82.3 meters. I like this question. I like this question. Might be. Okay. So last day we did off a cliff vertical. I like that question. Today we're doing off a cliff horizontal. I like that question. Yeah, good call. Turn the page. Now, probably, though, I wouldn't walk you through step A and step B. I might just say, here's the projectile. Tell me the range. How would I start this? I would DALP, draw a little picture. Oh, sorry, Anna. DALP stands for draw a little picture, if you're wondering. Whenever I use that, I don't know, because I did that at the beginning of the year, and I don't know if I've ever explained that to you. So it is DALP, draw a little picture. So it's going to look, you know what, really similar to the one we just did. Let's see the uh, heights, one, two, three. And horizontal velocity of 12. Point two. As a projectile, it's going to look something like that. Who's in Math 11? By the way, it's actually a parabola. 
which is one of the reasons we look at parabolas so much in math. They show up all over the place. It's half of an upside down parabola, but it forms a parabolic trajectory. And I'm going to say uh, horizontal, vertical. What two things can I write down almost without thinking, but I have to know physics? AX is 0. AY is negative 9.8. Now I go specific to the question, what else does I know? What's that one, two, three? <coughs> vertical? Or, and by the way, that's why the DALP is so handy, because it's pretty obvious if you've drawn the picture right, what's vertical, what's horizontal. So you're saying that goes under vertical. What mistake have I just made? OK, got to let, I mean, they get below from where I started from. Um, what's that 12.2? can't solve this. I have to use my physics knowledge to add one more piece of information. Otla, which piece of information? How about VY initial? VYI is what? Oh, yeah, it's a nice number. Solve for time on your own. I'll do it up here. Let's see if we end up in the same spot. Um, in your homework, if you take shortcuts, Jake, I'm probably OK with that. In our notes, let's show every step so that when we're studying, we know what the heck we did. The woohoo is optional. It's going to work out even. <coughs> uh, do you get what I got? Didn't make a mistake. And then I transferred the time under to my horizontal as well. By the way, this question didn't even bother saying find time. What is, what's the only thing this question wanted me to find? But I, again, you're going to spend, sorry, no pun intended, most of your time finding time. Once in a while, they'll give you the time of flight. Jake, then it really falls apart. Um, OK. Uh, oh, uh, range. Oh, they want me to find. That distance. Looking for an equation that has A, V, X, T, and D in it. Lo and behold, Dane, it's this one. Why was I lazy? Why didn't I put an initial on the velocity in this equation, even though it's been there every other time? No acceleration. Speaking of no acceleration, hey, hey. Now, in your homework, feel free, if you're comfortable, Emma, to, not e to just go straight to dx equals vxt. That's the range equation. I'm good with that. In your homework, some of you might even feel free to write this down and go straight to the, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm good with that. On a test or a quiz, of course, McKinley, I always show more work. I want to be a little more paranoid. Um, Twelve point two, five point oh one. Oh, wait a minute. Instead of going five point zero one, that's a waste. Use my answer button and be even more macabre. Sixty one point one. Yep. 
So when I was in high school, my physics teacher, we did this as an experiment. We had a little ramp where we rolled a ball bearing down and we found where it landed. We measured its range. And by doing that, well, let's see. If I knew the range, could I work my way backwards and find the time of flight? Yeah. Could I also maybe even find Vx? I was clever. Yeah. So we actually used the ramp to find what speed we were leaving at. And then we went up onto the gym roof, back when this was legal. And we put the ramp right on the edge of the gym roof. Carefully, back when this was legal, lowered a tape measure down to get the height of the cliff. Figured out from the gym roof what the range should be, face down on the appropriate block. And uh, we had some kids go down. They put a garbage bucket down where we thought it should land. And we'd made a mistake. Our, the two kids made a mistake. They put the garbage bucket right where they thought it was going to land. They should have put the center of the garbage bucket right where they thought it was going to land. Instead, they put the edge of the garbage bucket. And I kid you not, our ball bearing hit the lip of the garbage bucket. We were within half a millimeter. Okay. It was a nice heavy lead ball bearing, nice and aerodynamic. So even though, Jake, I'm saying ignore air resistance, you know what? If you're dealing with like a cannonball shape, not much. Okay, if you're dealing with something that's not aerodynamic, like a wiffle ball or something, fair enough. But I also want you to notice, you can also go backwards here. So 61.1, example three. A projectile is launched horizontally. Underline the word horizontally. We didn't in the last question. We probably should have. Uh, by the way, tomorrow's lesson is instead of launching horizontally, we'll launch at an angle. Components. But for now, we're launching horizontally. Let's dulp. Thirty-two meters per second. Ha ha. Although really it looks like this. What's that 144? Oh, this. Kai, what? I think we can work backwards. It turns out this is actually way easier. Uh, what do they want us to find? What do we call how high? D what? Because I asked you to. D what? Because I asked you to. D what? I'll never get, I'll never get tired of that joke. D what? Yeah, OK. OK. Is this a projectile moving in two dimensions? Let's go components. You didn't figure it out the first time, really? OK. Shaq, what else can I write down right away? Because I know physics. Now, what else do I know? Let's see. What's that 32? Pause for one second. Can you put it face down on the appropriate block? Hey, what else do I know? Oh, so that's going to go under dx, cool, is uh, 144. By the way, can you see which column I know three things in? The left, okay, I'm going to solve this horizontally. I do know one more thing, though. Now, that part is only true when you launch horizontally, which is why I keep underlining the word horizontally. Zach, that's one of my trigger words for projectiles. Um, which column do I know three things in? That's where I'm going to find time. I'm looking for an equation that has A, V, D, and T in it. Oh, you're kidding me. Dx equals Vxt plus a half At squared. Oh, so you know what? I didn't even bother writing it. I'll live with that now. What are we trying to find? Get the T by itself, please. Oh, we've rewritten way tougher than this. T equals D over V 
I guess, dx over vx. It's 144 divided by 32. This might actually work out kind of to a nice number, a nice decimal. 4.5 seconds. What are we trying to find here? I'm looking for an equation that has A, V, T, and D in it. Holy schmole. DY equals VY initial T plus 1 half AY T squared. Although, Kai, I can do that because VY initial is 0. And I already have the D by itself. That's why I said, if you know the range, it's actually a little easier. Less rewriting of stuff. It's going to be 0 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 4.5 squared. How high is this cliff? By the way, I should be fussy. Uh, well, let's see. We are going to get a negative. Okay, it's going to give us a displacement. So I'll even say, don't. Put a vector sign on there. 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 4.5 squared. So it is saying, hey, you ended up below from where you started from, 99 meters below from where you started from. All right, negative 99.2. Since I asked how high and height's technically a scalar, I'd also take 99.2. Because when you say how high is the cliff, even when you're standing on top of the cliff, you don't say the cliff is negative 99 meters high. You just in English, we say 99 meters high. So, I'll, but I'll go negative 99.2 meters. So, if I know how far, how high, I can find out how far. If I know how far, I can find out how high. What else can we do? Let's see, I got example four. Yep, yeah, last one. Projectile is launched from a 225 meter high cliff with a horizontal, underline the word horizontal, velocity of 54 meters per second. A, what is the range? Been there, done that. We'll do that again. B, what's the horizontal component of the velocity just before impact? Hmm. C, What's the vertical component of the velocity just before impact? Hmm. D, what's the impact velocity? <whistles> hey, Ben, knock, knock. Who's there? I like this question. You're supposed to put me on the desk? Didn't you hear me say that? Dolp. Two hundred and twenty five, I did two hundred and fifty five. Apparently can't read my own typing. Horizontal vertical yoink yoink. AX is nothing. You're nothing. AY is negative nine point eight. Oh, VY initial is also nothing. Vx is 54. I need one more thing somewhere. Oh. Is what, Kai? Nope, thank you for playing. Click translate fries at the door. I'm glad you did that because it's an easy mistake to make. Don't. Which column do I know two things in?
I need to find time. Even though it said find the range, I need to find time. Is there an equation that has D, V, I, A, and T in it? There is, Anthony. Which one? Hey, what's VY initial? So uh, normally I wouldn't do this, but I know I'm going to need a fair bit of room and I'm going to be drawing some more pictures. So I'm going to go straight to saying, you know what? I think time equals the square root of 2 dy over ay. Was that correct? I'm going from memory, but I think that's what it was. Yes? But Rob, you okay with how we derived that? We've done it a bunch of times. I would never do that on a test or a quiz. I'd derive it just to be safe, but it's that C, D, and E are going to take a bit of space. Uh, uh, oh, the square root of 2, negative 225, negative 9.8. times, Mr. Duick, divided by negative 9.8, square root 6 point what? 6.7763. I'll go 6.78, but I'll keep this number on my calculator. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'll write it to 5 sig. I'll go 6.7763, because that's not my final answer, so I'll carry some extra sig figs around. But I'll transfer it here. T equals 6.7763. Kalen, what did part A want me to find? What's the range? Which distance? Right, because there's always going to be two now. I've got to be fussy. I knew you knew. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that you knew that I know that you knew. You know? Okay. Hey, Halen, yep. why did I stop there? Why didn't I write it plus a half AT squared? Uh, because What's the most common people, mistake people make? They want to put the negative 9.8 here. They want to put a vertical acceleration into a horizontal equation. And that's no, that's not. Uh, it's going to be 54 times 6.7763. Three hundred and sixty-six. That's a good range. A. Dx equals three hundred and sixty-six meters. Let's put a little box around that. What did B want me to find? The horizontal component. So now we're talking about. If I go back to my picture, d d d d d d d d d d d d d. We're talking about right there just before impact. I guess it's coming in at an angle. I can use my imagination, coming in at a slightly downwards angle. Did I say angle? It must have components. What's the horizontal component of the velocity just before impact? It's a trick question. Why is it 54? So horizontally, any time while that projectile is in the air, I can tell you how fast it's moving sideways. 54, 54, 54. In other words, Vx final, just before impact, is 54 meters per second. Vx after two seconds is 54 meters per second. Vx after five seconds is 54 meters per second. Uh, Vx after seven seconds, okay, then it's hit the ground, now it's stopped. But while it's in the air, I know that. Trev, what's part C want me to find? More specific. Ah. Listen to Kai. Well, in physics, not anywhere else. Okay. Um, this wants me to find that. What else do I, vertical. What else do I know vertically? This. This. 
this. This. And this. Those are all from my vertical column. So, can I use those to find V final? I got two options. Don't write this next bit down. Manny, I could go like this. Although it would be vertical, 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 and vertical, and then square root. The only problem with this is, like we found earlier with Tawny, this is actually going to give us a positive answer. And we would have to say, no, it's going down. Negative. Or I have another equation that's got v final by itself. Uh, vertical, vertical, vertical. By the way, why am I not putting a y on time? There's a magic word that begins with the letter S. Time's a scalar. What do I, it's, it's, not, it's not vertical or time, right? Time, mass, some of the, the scalars, right? Now, this Emma certainly will get us VY final. The only risk is you better make darn sure that you solve for T correctly is all. However, if I mark these, if you got time wrong, but you did the rest correctly with the wrong time, I would give you full marks for the rest. I would take marks off for finding time incorrectly, but I would give you everything else. It's just a pain. Zero minus 9.8. Sorry. Zero. Try that again. Zero plus negative 9.8 uh, times 6.7763. I had already turned the plus negative into a minus, but I thought I might lose you guys there, so. Um, negative 9.8 times 6.7763. We're going to hit the ground at, vertically, negative 66.4 meters per second. There's C. Michael, what's D want me to find? Sorry? Isn't that what we just found? Well, no. I think the impact velocity, I think the impact velocity is that one there. It's hitting the ground at an angle. But I'm going to argue that really, that's made up of, it is all coming together, a Vx and a Vy final. What's Vx? What's Vx any time through this projectile's life? 54. What's Vy? Now, I've got the arrow pointing down. So I can ignore writing the negative. I've included that in my picture, yes. 66.4. Uh, How can I find magnitude? Pythagoras, really? Yeah, who knew? This number squared plus 54 squared, 54, right? Square root. 85.6. What? Oh, yeah. At. Where's my vector coming from? That's where the theta is going to go. Rob, up there. Which trig function? Opposite, adjacent, tan, what we're doing outside right now. No, some of you. Right. 
Some of you need like SPF infinity or something like that, right? Um, so tan theta equals uh, 66.4 over 54. By the way, it's going to be close to 45 degrees because 66 and 54 are roughly the same size. If I get something like 21 degrees or 88 degrees, I've screwed up. Um, shift tan of 66.4 opposite over adjacent. Do you get 51 degrees? Oh, what of what? Well, if you said south of east, I'd take it, but that's fingernails on the blackboard to me, because it is wrong, technically, because that's not north. North is towards the back of my room. And down is not south in real life, because now we're moving in two dimensions, Dane. We've got to be a bit fussier. Down is not south. South is to the front of my classroom. I would live with it if you wrote that, you drew a little compass rose. But we've thought of this too. And I think I've used this once before. Does anybody remember? We would say below the horizontal. Or below the horizon, but the noun for the horizon actually is the horizontal. See it, Jeff? Below the horizontal. What would above the horizontal be? Yep. One of those. I'll take south of east, but I'll probably draw a little frowny face next to it. Projectiles. In two dimensions, you know what? First of all, what a great, if we were, if we were having our final exam, what a great review this would be for DVI, all our kinematic stuff, which is one of the reasons I try and end the year with it. It's a good review. But also, hey, this is what your brain is doing automatically when you play catch, right? You are able to intuitively estimate the range, estimate what V you need, and you can, hey, real athletes, they can put it pinpoint accuracy. It's pretty impressive what your brains can do subconsciously. They're solving quadratics, they're, so, they're, they're doing all this. Just saying. Answer the fall, uh, you can do number one. Two, three, I think I'm going to be assigning most of this. Yeah, four is good. Five is good. Yep, six, I was hoping to give you good time, yep. Seven. Now, seven, they gave me time. That one's going to fill up, fall apart because you can put T in both horizontal and vertical right away. In fact, I think you'll find you know three things, you know three things right away, and you can just kind of, I can't quite say plug and chug. You've got to get stuff by itself, but it, it's very, very doable. If you have time, you're not spending all your time finding time. It's going to fall apart. Uh, ooh, what's eight asking me to find? Vx. Haven't done one like that, see if you can figure it out. Otherwise, I'll talk about that next class. And then, number nine is what we ended with. I like this question, I like this question, and I think you need practice. Number 10 as well. Okay, so everything, Mr. Duick, yeah. You got 20 minutes, 10 questions. Probably actually can get it all done in class, although not many of you handed in the lesson one homework. Hand in the lesson one homework, please, too.